Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to talk about French cleat mounting systems on Dad It Yourself. So what is a French cleat? Well, French cleat is a 45 degree angle. We'll call this the cleat for the tool accessory, and this is the cleat for the wall. And they're an opposing 45 degree angle, and they nest into each other, providing superior holding strength, but the flexibility to move the tool wherever you want. So to give you a better idea, so here's the tool holder with the tool cleat, and this would be the wall cleat. And as you can see, they nest right into each other, like that. All right, so why 45 degrees? Well, most saws go to 45 degrees. If you wanted to cut, say, a 70 degree, you could set this to 20 and run the board through this way, but you'd have to do each cleat individually. Whereas when you set it to 45 degrees, you have a board like I have here, for example, which is a six inch wide, set your fence at the halfway point, run it through, and then you end up getting two opposing cleats of the same size. As you can see now, I have two boards that are exactly the same length with opposing cleats on them. In a case where you want your tool cleat to be smaller and your wall cleat to be bigger, you could go with a 1x4 or a 1x5 and then only cut maybe an inch off of one side or offsetting it, not getting to the center. But that was just the example. So how tall are cleats? Well, there's no hard fast rule. My cleats are just a shy under three inches. Why shy under three inches? Well, three is actually divisible into 48. So I can get so many slats out of a four by eight sheet of plywood. In fact, this entire wall was made using one sheet of four by eight plywood. So how far should you space out the cleats? Well, in my case, again, these are just a hair over three inches. And what that provides me is enough spacing here so that if I have a taller tool, it can bridge between two cleats and provide support, but at the same time I have enough gap here so the tool below has enough room to go onto and click on. These cleats are about an inch and a half, so that's plenty of room there. In some cases the tool holder is small enough that it gets all the support it needs from one cleat. Or in the case of a larger tool, it spans multiple cleats. What you don't want is your cleats so close together that you're wasting cleats just because they're in the middle of something. So what I found is my cleat spacing at or around the same height as my cleat height has been ideal for me. If you had a situation where your tool holder wasn't reaching down to the next cleat, this one barely does, but say this was a little bit shorter or this was a little bit lower and it didn't reach and I needed that lateral support, what you would have to do is just take a block of wood that's the same thickness as your cleat and put like a little shoe on the bottom of the tool holder to push it off of the pivot surface. So how strong is the French cleat system? Well, the first force we need to think about is the vertical force or the shear. How much weight is pushing down on the cleat? So the shear strength of the French cleat system is made up of a bunch of factors. The shear strength of the plywood, the glue, and the mechanical fasteners you use. So I use construction grade screws right here. I get these from Home Depot. This is a number six inch and a quarter. I use those on the tool holders. And then I use a number eight, two and a half on the wall. These have incredible holding strength. Um, 500 foot pounds of pull for the number eight. And then 250 foot pounds of pull for the inch and a quarter coming through plywood and the number eight coming through, say, Douglas fir, or like a two by four stud. So how do I secure these to the wall? Well, as I stated earlier, I use a number eight construction screw and these are two and a half inches long. And what that will do is get through this five eighths OSB and then into the stud more than that inch and a quarter I need for that 500 pounds of pulling force to uh, yank this cleat off the wall. So well within the range. And how do I do that? Well, I've already shot a level line along here. It gives me my correct distance from my cleat above. 
and I've got it right here. And I set that on that line. And then I continue down the wall. So while we're talking about shear strength, if you remember this video um, where I got these and I hung them, they are hung on a wood cleat. I don't know if you can see it back there, but it's right there with only two screws holding them up. Each one of these things weighs over 50 pounds fully loaded. So that gives you an idea how strong that can be. All right, so I made this little mock-up and we're gonna talk about horizontal shear. So this is half inch plywood with construction grade inch and a quarter screws here and holding the cleat in here. So half inch plywood has 150 to 300 foot pounds of shear, uh, the wood actually tearing. We already talked about the screws, I have almost 300 pounds. So right here, I'm strong. I'm 450, 500 pounds of strength at this point. But as we move out, the longitudinal or the length and horizontal away from the pivot point, as you can see, I'm starting to get a lot of flex. Okay, one of two things is gonna happen if I start putting a whole bunch of weight on this. Technically, I could probably break this plywood, but probably not. This piece of plywood can probably easily hold 50 to 60 pounds if it was supported on both ends. Where I'm gonna fail is right here. My pivot point is going to shear. Okay, I'm going to probably break the plywood at this point because I'm no longer holding the weight this way. I'm pulling away. Uh, the chances are that the plywood will fail before the screws in the wall will pull out. And I still, I mean, honestly, I've got a lot of support here, but as you can see, there's a lot of flex. So what we want to do is we want to transfer this horizontal load back towards the wall as a pivot point. And how we do that? Well, we do that with brackets, just like in a shelf. Okay, so I threw these pieces of 1 8 inch plywood on the sides, and that's gonna provide that shear across the horizontal. Imagine if this was all built of 3 quarter inch plywood. And as you can see, it is rock solid now. How strong is this? It's this strong. This is a 109 piece mechanics tool set. There's nothing but metal tools in that box. Still not convinced? Let's go bigger. All right, quick tour of what I just built. So this is 24 inches deep, 48 inches across, and about 20 inches high, somewhere right around there. Half inch plywood, two by four box construction. Nothing special. And then my brackets are just three quarter inch plywood screwed to the top and then screwed down to there right there and you know what's cool about this that's a french cleat so this is just a prototype but it is fully functional and it is strong well i'm thinking we should give this a really good test 230 pounds of me. Oh, look at that. I don't need that no more. All right. Well, that seems to hold. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about French cleats, 
put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Data yourself.